head, you know. We'll use it uh, later when we start actually making it. What? Well, hello my friends, Alfred Tardo here at the Rebel Turner. And today I have a special guest, my grandson, Carl. Well, he came over very excited today. Hold on, Carl. Get down. Very excited and with good reason to be excited. Because he just came from a, a Home Depot workshop, right? Yeah. Hold on, let me get you on there. Could I put this thing away with the bad string I got? Okay. Ugh. Anyway, he was at a Home Depot workshop. And uh, what did you make over there? Um, a flower pot. A flower pot? Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. But anyway, he also went ahead and drew the plans for an R2 D2. D2. So he's got all the components drawn up and he wants to attempt to make an R2 D2. So. Because I don't visualize plans very well, because they're just drawn, we went on the internet and pulled up a picture of R2-D2. And that is what we're working on today, correct, yeah. Colin? Yeah. All right, I'll tie that up in a minute. Okay. Hold on. So we're going to work off these two sets of plans and come up with our own version I know that later on he wants to motorize it. He wants to put electronics in it to make the leg go up and down. And I already told him that I can't do it because I don't know how to do electronics. So we'll see how it comes up and how we're going to tackle it. Yeah. is uh, one and a quarter it looks like the head is one third of the body size <coughs> So far, we got the the head. We're just making big chunks. And the body. We will need two pieces for the arms. Make two legs out of a different material because I don't think I have enough to make it. But maybe, maybe the feet can be made out of this piece to let the end. Well, guys, it's like they have to be the same shape. First thing we're gonna do is put the head on and now this is going to be somewhat hollowed out so um, this doesn't check and remember split up the, the helmet uh, I have to wear yeah as soon as we start turning at the dimensions on his head. His head is two-thirds the width of his of the height. So let's see how we do on that. Um, I think this like has to be like stretched out. I, my thing has to be like stretched out. It doesn't fit? Yeah it kind of hurts. Well, I think it needs just stretched out. Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. Okay, so I got Colin over here. And he's ready for action. Mm. To stop turning. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So we're going to start rounding this over 
and then we'll see exactly and we're going to make a tendon on the bottom to hold it up and to lock it up. Speed is going to run around 500 RPM. This part, like, kind of doesn't look like it's how it's supposed to be. It's not? Yeah, see how it's like sticking out? Like right. That? So let's go through that. With a tenon made, we can put that up. Um, that actually looks like it could like snap it into the body. That's what it's for. That's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the part that's going to sit on the body, and it will also be the part that I can use so, over here to hold it up with. Now. I think that looks like his head. Yeah. Now we just have to move on to this big body. We definitely do. This piece is heavy actually.
Well, I will determine now the opening for the head to fit in. Probably put it all together and shape it. And they then take it to down in proportions to what I need for body length. I cannot uh, really go any further than this. Uh, that's the piece that I want to keep in. And we got a little knot over there. Uh, I mean, beautiful, beautiful piece of wood.
Well, here it is. My grandson's drawing that he came over with. He came with a full set of plans to make an R2D2. And uh, so he helped me. This is plans. He helped me set it up at the beginning and started turning, but uh, you know, got a little distracted, and then I had to do some faster turning to get clean cuts and so on. So he left. Um, and uh, anyway, it's an R2D2 made out of the spalted um, sweet gum. The sweet gum has changed dramatically since I got it. When I got it, it was all white. Then it started getting a little bit brown from the outside edging. And now the whole wood has really turned into a beautiful, beautiful color. Beautiful markings on it. The um, lens over here, his eye, is made out of uh, spalted uh, mango. And so is the camera. In there, the inside I kept it natural. The body is the same thing. Kept it natural on the inside. The arms, I'm not sure what it is. It might be a beach or something like that. But uh, again, here's the markings that I got on this wood. Uh, just amazing. Amazing piece. And uh, the feet, both for the arm and the front uh, deal here is made out of Ipe. Well, I hope you like it. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and hit that thumbs up. Now, this is far from being precise because I wasn't looking for precision. I was just looking for something to go into a, a child's room and uh, hopefully something that he can do for a long time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you very soon. And here's my grandson who came, the architect, who came with the drawings for it. I think he did an awesome job because without the drawings, I know we could not do it. What do you tell the YouTubers? Call them? Uh, well, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. No, that one is, uh, the camera's full, so um, it's off. That one is the one that's recording. We have two cameras. See that? Amazing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, this is a little wet, but that's yours. Grab it by the bottom. We have a boost hole. It's heavy. Oh,